Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper, and today I want to talk about bedding. Several websites and YouTube videos have talked about bedding, but these resources typically underemphasize the importance of assembling a good set of bedding and overemphasize the importance of sleeping bags as the only piece of equipment campers need. In contrast to these sources, I contend that getting a good night's sleep is perhaps the most important key to having an enjoyable tent camping trip to develop campgrounds and that several items are more important than sleeping bags for sleeping well during spring, summer, and fall camping trips. To support my arguments, let me describe our strategies for making a comfortable bed. The first bedding item to pack when traveling by car is a ground blanket. After setting up the tent, spread the blanket on the floor to pro provide a little cushion, absorb moisture, and prevent conductive heat loss caused by sleeping on the cold ground. In the past, we used quilts and opened rectangular sleeping bags. Now we use this army wool blanket that cost about $20. When new, the blanket had a strong mothball smell, but Ava washed it with fabric softener and hung it out to sun dry. This photo shows the blanket on our tent floor before setting up our mattresses. When traveling by motorcycle, I did not pack a ground blanket, but could have used an emergency space blanket to prevent conductive heat loss. A comfortable mattress is perhaps the most Im important piece of equipment for sleeping well. You can make do with an economy tent and an economy blanket, but don't be tempted to buy an economy mattress. Poor mattresses are the primary cause of miserable nights and terrible trips. My advice is to buy the most comfortable mattress you can fit into your vehicle. My sister and brother-in-law used two very thick flocked air beds, but they require a pump and reportedly develop leaks after brief use. We use two insulated self-inflating REI camp beds placed on top of two non-slip yoga mats. The beds are three and a half inches thick and 25 inches wide. They retail for $120 each. The Xped Mega Mat 10 is an even thicker mattress that is 4 inches thick, but each one costs $220. After positioning our mattresses on the floor of our tent, we cover them with a full-size fitted cotton sheet. The fitted sheet holds the two mattresses together and is very comfortable to sleep on. Then we add a full-size flat sheet for light cover if needed. When traveling by car, we could pack full-size pillows if we wanted. But I prefer to use my small, soft, clothing-filled duffel bags. To make them a little more comfortable, I cover them with pillowcases. Ava just likes to use a very small travel pillow filled with a blanket. Proper clothing should be worn every night to reduce radiant and convective heat loss, but the specific garments needed will depend upon predicted low temperature, humidity, wind, and shelter type. When the predicted low is above 80 degrees Fahrenheit, I wear a cotton tank top and polyester shorts. When the predicted low temperature drops below 80, I wear a polyester short sleeve shirt instead of the cotton shirt. When the predicted low drops below 70, I add a polyester long sleeve shirt, a pair of polyester athletic pants, a pair of wool socks, and a knit stocking hat. When the predicted temperature drops below 50, I add thermal underwear and a fleece jacket. For most summer camping trips, we just take two wool blankets for cover. Ava uses this heavier Pendleton Yakima 
cap blanket that retails for $170 but can be purchased on eBay for less than $100. I prefer to use this lighter army wool blanket that costs about $20. If the temperature is predicted to drop below 50 degrees, we take lightweight sleeping bags rated down to about 35 degrees. When buying sleeping bags, consider good quality synthetic filled bags rather than down filled bags. Synthetic bags are just as warm as down bags rated down to the same temperature. They keep you warmer when wet. They dry faster when wet and they cost much less than downfill bags. You can buy a good synthetic fill bag for less than $125. Several companies, including Marmot, REI, and a North Face, make good, reasonably priced bags. The primary limitation of a synthetic fill bag is it requires more packing space, but modern tent campers have more than enough space available in their cars. If the temperature is predicted to drop below 40 degrees, we take our Marmot Trestles bags rated down to 15 degrees. Hopefully we won't have to test that limit, but I have slept comfortably in mine on a snowy night that dropped down to 26 degrees. The worst part of the night was getting up at 5 a.m. to go to the bathroom. Many campgrounds have nighttime noise that may be louder than you expect. Owls, whippoorwills, crickets, and cicadas are common. Rain hitting on the tent roof can be surprisingly loud. A few campgrounds are located near major highways, railroad tracks, and even airports. One of our favorite campgrounds, for example, Traverse City, Michigan State Park is located next to a major highway and very close to an airport runway. Finally, you may have to deal with crying children and drunk adults playing music or arguing. I don't have a problem sleeping through this noise, but many people do. To them, I suggest that you buy earplugs or a personal music player and headphones. Here are some nice sleeping headphones that can be found on Amazon.com for $40. Good morning. It's Saturday morning and Hav and I are laying in bed in our tent and the wind is picking up and so we thought we'd let you listen to the wind. Now it's settled down a little bit. Uh, here's Ava. Whoops, she doesn't want to be in the movie. There's her hand waving. Uh, got a little cool last night, so we've got our Pendleton blanket, our sheet and our blanket. Let's see here. The wind has stopped. So we'll, uh, uh, I'll turn it back on when the wind starts again. I'm busy looking in the back. Before concluding, let me address two more sleep-related topics. First of all, hammocks. Ava and I take our ENO hammocks on every trip and set them up whenever trees are available in our campsite. We enjoy midday naps, but would never use them as our primary sleeping platform because they get uncomfortable after a couple of hours. They do not allow physical contact they are colder than our ground blanket and mattress combination, and they do not provide protection from mosquitoes. Furthermore, many campsites do not have three trees that are needed to set up two hammocks. Although modern tents provide considerable protection and modern camp mattresses provide considerable comfort, many people would not go camping without a cot 
because they fear sleeping on the cold ground. So for these viewers, let me offer some opinions about cots. First, be aware of their limitations. Cots cannot easily fit into smaller tents, thus you would have to buy a larger, more expensive tent that may take extra packing space and may not fit in some campsites. Cot legs can damage a tent floor. Cots require extra packing space, and cots are cold in cool weather. Overall, they greatly reduce mobility and are impractical if you typically take short one- or two-night trips. Cots would be more practical for long hunting or fishing base camp trips. If you decide you have to buy a cot, you may want to consider the Thermarest Luxury Light Cot that costs about $200. In sum, if you want to sleep better during the warm camping season, focus your attention on securing a warm ground blanket, a thick air mattress, comfortable cotton sheets, comfortable pillows, and a light blanket rather than a sleeping bag, a hammock, or a cot. Well, I hope this video gives you some ideas about how to assemble a comfortable set of bedding items for your future camping trips. For more information about camp bedding, please read my book, Basic Tent Camping. Visit my website, www.basictentcamping.com, and visit my Facebook page, Modern Tent Camping. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go tent camping. <music>